My name is Roran Banda. I'm the Archbishop of the Anglican Church of Rwanda. I came into the church to serve full time in 2010, November. Those five years have been challenging, they have been exciting, uh, they have been um, rewarding, uh, but at the same time, uh, um, it was also time for growth, personal growth, personal growth. First of all, let me say that when I became Archbishop, I had um, what we call an Archbishop's charge. And in my charge, I had five pillars. I wanted to equip leaders. I wanted to do evangelism and discipleship. I wanted to focus on early childhood, what you call ECD today. I wanted to focus on financial, uh, uh, financial literacy, management and accountability. And I wanted what I call sustainability. Sustainability of the ministry of the church, sustainability of the work that we do. And so I started, I embarked on those projects. First of all, let me say that I had a year and a half to go to, to serve. But uh, when the church realized that I had this uh, hairy, audacious, and ambitious goal according to uh, Good to Great, a book called Good to Great, they said, this, you don't have enough time to deliver. So they gave me enough time, which they extended me for five years to 20, uh, 2023 June. So I was going to be finishing this June. Last year, our House of Bishops met and they said, you know what? You have started too many projects, too many things are happening. Again, we see that you don't have enough time. And so they requested me to extend again to 2026. So the whole extending was based on what I could deliver and what was being delivered some of it half-baked, not completely finished. Others underway in those areas, five categories that I was talking about. So the idea of extending my time was to give me enough time to finish what was started. It's actually exciting to talk about it. So we talk, first one, we talk about equipping among the five pillars. So the equipping sent us to starting a university. So as a result, we now have East African Christian College up in Masaka that started, actually was accredited by the Ministry of Education and the government, and it started in March of 2021. Today we have over 800 students in Masaka. So that is, that is an achievement. That is result, an outcome of what has happened in these five years. Um, we are also trying to train pastors. Number two, uh, we are seeing more people coming into the church. In other words, we have increased in a number as a result of our evangelism, of our discipleship uh, program. We have introduced a number of programs in that area. Community Bible study, which is studying Bible studies in small groups. We have introduced uh, um, a, a discipleship uh, program. And that has, just to give you an, an example, when I came in the Gasabo Diocese, Gasabo is a metropolitan diocese. Even though I'm an archbishop, I also have a diocese. To give you an idea, when I came, Gasabo had 2,904 members. Today, we are at over 6,000 members. So we have doubled. And I'm just talking about the Gasabo. You can also say the same thing for the other dioceses. Um, at the same time, we started a new diocese, new diocese, what they call a missionary diocese in the Karongi district. So Karongi diocese started in 2020 in May. That is growth for the church. We have also started Nyaruguru diocese. Nyaruguru diocese started last year in August. That is growth for the church. So that is within the domain or the pillar of evangelism and discipleship. The Anglican Church of Rwanda today, we celebrate over 600 early childhood centers, ECDs. That is a growth. In Gasabo alone, we had four, and now we have 19. So there's an outcome, that's growth. 
Um, you, you talk about another, uh, another result. Another result is, uh, for example, um, we have introduced a tool for financial management and for accounting, what you call QuickBooks. And we are using it in our dioceses. We have also introduced the whole idea of audits, internal and external. In this office, we have done our internal audits. We have also done external audits. That is a practice that is not common in the, in the church. So that is an outcome, that is result. Uh, we have also on the fifth pillar, which is sustainability. I believe that sustainability is development of both human capacity, but also of, of, of financial resources. We have developed projects for the church that are income generating. That income will help us to develop our programs, to sustain our programs, but also to do more. A good example, when you get out of this office, you will see a building here on the side of us. It's called the Trinity Plaza. That is a building that we built in these uh, last uh, four years. It is now producing. We will actually be completely out of debt on this building come the end of September this year. That was challenging because we also built it. It was also during, of, uh, during the time of COVID where the economic challenges and everything else you think of. If you go up to Lemera, nearby where the uh, police station was in the stadium, you will also find what you call Anglican House. That Anglican House is a commercial building. It's a commercial building that is generating income, that is helping us not only run the operations of this office, but also be able to do more. That building, we are 20,000 US dollars away from getting out of that debt on that building. There's an outcome that has ever been. You can go to Igiproso. Igiproso, you will see, we had built a building there called the Union Plaza. We called it Union Plaza because it was all the dioceses that had come together. The idea was a project that's common to us. We built that building. Thank God now it is in the hands of Kigali Diocese. And Kigali Diocese has done, has done more for that. You are in this building that we are sitting in. It's a three-level building. This is also another outcome. When you go out of here, you can go across the Kibagabaga Hospital here. You will find a four-level building that is going to be apartments, that is going to be complete by the end of May. That is an outcome. Um, when you go to St. Ignace here, in front of St. Ignace, on this road of Kiba, uh, Kibagabaga, you will also see a building that is actually going to be finished at the end of this month. We call it protective. And there's a commercial building, it's a four-level building with an underground parking. By the way, these two have underground parkings. So that is another outcome. So it has been exciting and challenging. It has been also years of growth, uh, something that I think had not happened before. And that is only what is happening at this level. When you go down to the dioceses, in Byumba, in Shira diocese, Kigeme diocese, um, you go to Changugu, you go to, to Shogwe diocese, you are seeing more of that nature. So the five pillars have not only inspired the Anglican church as a whole to serve, but I think there are other churches that are also emulating uh, that kind of, of, uh, of desire to be able to sustain their ministries. When we said that that university the desire was also to intervene, first of all, in the Anglican Church, we require that all pastors have to finish high school in order to be ordained. We also require that they will have a theological education. Unfortunately, many who were already in the service didn't have that uh, theological education. But now that we have started our own school, we are offering degrees in theology and biblical studies. We are offering a postgraduate diploma in theology. We have also started a program that will be diocese-based on each diocese, that is certificate for those that have, do not have the educational background or the qualifications to go to the university to get their postgraduate diploma or get their degrees. They will receive a certificate, but that's more of an informal education. 
So we have designed the curriculum. We are going to be delivering it. It's already happening in Changugu. It's already happening in Biumba. And so we, we are setting up all levels to train our clergy. We believe that we will meet the standard of the government because the standard talks about if you are going to be a supervisor, let's say, give an example, a parish. If you are going to head a parish that has some parishes, you have to have that degree requirement. And most of our pa pastors that we are training, we are training them to that level so that they can be the supervisors. There are some who are in service who have already had that degree. There are others who do not have it but are already in school now. And there are others that were already in the ministry who didn't qualify to go to that degree, whom we are preparing and have designed a program to respond to their needs. So I think we are set, not only for the Anglican Church, but we are also training for other churches. Adepe, Salvation Army, uh, the Baptists, uh, there are many who are coming to our institution right now to, tra to train. GAFCON is Global Anglican Future Conference. GAFCON is a movement, it's not a church, it's a movement within the Anglican Communion. That movement uh, started in 2008, and that conf first conference happened in Jerusalem. The second conference, because the conference happens every five years, the second conference was held in Nairobi in 2013. The third conference was held in Jerusalem again in 2018. And now the fourth conference is going to happen here in Kigali 2023. Now, the whole idea is to provide a forum for convincing Anglicans who believe in the authority of Scripture to come together to fellowship, to inspire each other, to be challenged, to retain and keep the Bible at the center. Uh, our theme for the conference is uh, to whom shall we go? Because there is all kinds of teaching and all kinds of things going all around us. And we say we will go to Jesus. Why? Because he reconciles us with God. Number two, we will go to the church. Why? For the fellowship of believers. Because the Bible says, don't give up fellowshipping together. Number three, we will go to the world and take the good news of Jesus Christ to the world. So the theme is, to whom shall we go? Jesus, the church, the world. And so that meeting will come together. It will be representing over uh, 55 to 60 million Anglicans around the world. It will be people from 40 countries. And it's a conference that is bringing it together. So far, we have 1,300 people that have registered. We believe that we will be around 1,300 to 1,400. We are keeping some out because it is an invitation only conference. So you have to be invited into it. And so that conference is going to happen here. It is exciting for us as Rwandans. It is exciting for the Church of Rwanda. It is exciting that we are also contributing to the mice meeting, incentives, conference, and exhibitions. So it's also exciting that as a church, we are actually inviting others to come. Rwanda has become a destination. Rwanda has become a, a place for conferences. Why not invite this church? And before we go too far, let me tell you why this conference is going to be held here. One, the Council of Archbishops, primates, they meet and they select a country where that conference will happen. Rwanda is home to what we call the East Africa Revival that happened in the Gahini, Ikanguro. So that attracts many people to this country. Rwanda is a land of a thousand years and thousand smiles. Maybe I should add on that there is also one that is mine and yours. So smiles all over. Rwanda is a country that it has the best quality of life. Look around, the city is beautiful, the country is beautiful. Rwanda is a country where you can get a visa at the airport. Many countries around the world, you don't just get a visa at the airport. Rwanda is unique to that. 
Rwanda is a place when you can walk in the streets of Kigali, not have to worry about who is going to pull my earring, or who is going to run away with my watch, or who is going to, 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 to take my necklace. That has happened to me in Brazil. That has happened to me to, in other countries where literally a person takes your necklace and pulls it and runs. This is a place where you can come. And lastly, this is a country that has risen from the ashes of the genocide. It is a story that we have to tell that reconciliation in Rwanda is unique. This is a country where people has to come and see and go and tell. And the telling will attract more to come and learn from this country. So those are the ideas that we sold to the primates conference and say, this is a place where you can have your conference and it's going to happen and we are excited. Now, this is a conference that's very interesting to, 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 to host and because these other ones that have happened, they were actually teams that went into those countries and organized and planned for that conference. It is the same here. Though we are hosting it, we are hosting it, but there are teams that are working in other countries, planning who are the speakers, how, who, how are they coming, but we have had a team that has been here for almost uh, a month, and we are working with our teams here to organize what is happening. So what do we have learned in other countries that can even be improved here in Rwanda? One, we have something to offer. We offer the beauty of Kigali, a clean city. We didn't see that in Nairobi, I'm sorry. And even in Jerusalem, we didn't see that. So that is something that we have to offer. And because we have to offer that, we have to stand tall, we have to walk um, smartly. And, and <laughs> Kigali Convention Center has been held, holding a number of conferences. So we are also learning from them. So we want to offer the best. And if we give all our heart, all our mind, if we give all our efforts, we will have done our best. But we expect that they can come and enjoy the conference. Number two, we want to tell the story of Rwanda. And uh, they will learn from it. Number three, we want to give them a Rwandan welcome on the first evening of the opening. I think the church is the moral compass of the society. I think the church has opportunity to serve people. You see, Christ came so that we may have life and have it in abundance. The question is, what is that life and what is that abundance? I think as a church, we have to address the total person, the whole person. So if I look at my spiritual, if I look at my emotional, if I look at my intellect, my cognitive development, if I look at my social well-being, if I look at my, my, my economic status, now you are addressing the whole of me because I have needs. So how does the church meet the holistic need of the Rwandan person? It's not even the church member. <laughs> because whoever is not a church member today may be a church member tomorrow. So how do we address the needs of the country that are both... How do we approach our church members, our Christianity, our preaching of the gospel from a transformational approach? You see, Christ said, the Bible says that whoever be received Christ, he has become a new creature. The old is gone. The new has come. What is that new? That is new is a new way of thinking, is a new way of doing, is a, is a, is a new set of beliefs. It's also a new identity in Christ. What does that new identity in Christ tell me? It tells me that I have to have good behavior, that are biblically based. It tells me that I have to take care of myself, take care of my body. It tells me that I have to, to love, 
my neighbor. It tells me that I have to attend to the needs of the needy. So I think we, the ch as a church in Rwanda, we need to serve the society of Rwanda. We need to be part of the transformation of what is happening. And I believe that if we approach it from the scriptural perspective, that we actually have a base. And that base is what happens in my heart, is what happens in my mind, that transforms my whole body, and me, you, another person, we transform the whole society. There shouldn't be stunted kids in this country. Why should they be stunted the kids in this country? When we have the mother's union in the Anglican church, when we have the women in the church and the men that attend to the needs of their children, when we can help one another and figure out how do we, we talk about homegrown solutions. What about the church? Can the church also get into that and look into the homegrown solutions to attend to the needs of the children? We talk about Ubudehe. Actually, I'm so happy that this Ubudehe thing has been taken out. You know why? Because I think if we are not careful, it can become, another, we can create a dependency. How do we actually help people to think about how they can transform their lives, how they can pull themselves from this vicious circle of poverty. I believe it is all in the mindset. Uh, I have a little story, I could have told it to you, but we don't have time. I said this to myself by the time I finished high school. Whatever can feed me, whatever can clothe me, whatever can develop me to be in the future to be a good husband, to be a good father. It won't be dirty. I will do it. If it is cleaning, I will clean. If it is uh, riding a bicycle and carrying, uh, I will do it. Whatever it is that will advance me. Of course, I was also a Christian. Something that has those values that are biblical values. You see, there is no small job. But sometimes, we have this mentality that I have to have this big job. There is no small job. During my studies in the U.S., I cleaned. I would clean. My wife would babysit for us to survive. During those days, I would load the trucks and unload the trucks. Well, today I'm an archbishop. Today I, I take care of my family. I had to do those things in order to survive, yes, but also in order to live. Because if, <laughs> if you just sit and feel sorry for yourself, it won't get you anywhere. So I think that the church has to get into that business of encouraging the people, awakening their spirit, their mind, challenging them to think differently, to work. Uh, prayer alone, I'm sorry it is not going to get in anywhere. <laughs> but you pray and you also work. And when you eat today because you have worked, you pray for tomorrow, but also tomorrow you work. Uh, that's what I happen to believe. Maybe, maybe I'm, I'm a different uh, preacher and teacher of the gospel. But I believe the gospel is full. And the gospel is comprehensive. And the gospel is holistic.